Good day, this is Joe Graves, Secretary of Education for the State of South Dakota, recognizing along with all of you National School Counselors Week. Talk about a profession that has been had more challenges in the last few years. The social ills and collapsing social structures that surround our students would have been hard to imagine even just a few short years ago. And I hope you aren't finding these realities so stark that your job has become less enjoyable or less meaningful than in the past. Because you shouldn't be finding that. If anything, your jobs are more important than ever. I also hope that this job hasn't become so overwhelming that you're tempted to throw in the towel, either by departing the profession or adopting an external locus of control. And you're the only group that I could use that expression with because you're the only group that will understand what I'm talking about. Congratulations! When I started school in 1968, life was good. Cleveland Elementary didn't have a school counselor. At least I don't think they did, but what do I know? I was a kindergartner. Frankly, I didn't need a school counselor. We had our classroom teachers, including one fairly really outstanding educator, my fourth grade teacher, Miss Johnson. I found out later that she even had a first name, Marlis. And I didn't need a school counselor seven years later when I started at Whittier Junior High School. I wasn't a discipline problem, and I had decent grades. I must admit, though, that I didn't like school anymore once I got to Whittier. It was such a large school, and it was almost impossible to make it between classrooms and with the brief amount of passing time they gave us there. Opening the locker was a thrice daily stress test, plus the whole school was full of, wait for it, junior high kids. Getting to, going to school rather for quite some time was a daily unhappiness for me there. Getting through our 10 classes every day, a tedious march from 8.30 to 3.30, punctuated by peer pressure, dashes between classes including bathroom breaks, mandatory showers and PE, and just trying to fit in. Alas, the girl with whom I was hopelessly in love in 7th grade was, effortless, was effortlessly ignoring me. It wasn't about two weeks into my 7th grade year that I noticed a familiar face in a small office window that I passed between classes, between math and science, in fact. It was the guidance counselor's office. That's what we called them then. And inside, in her position, was Ms. Johnson. Now, Marla Schmidt, because she had married. I found an excuse about once a week to stop at her office and receive the kind of words, the encouragements, the offers of assistance that made the day of school much more tolerable. Week by week, things got better, and school became fun again. I hope you're finding gigantic solutions for your students' gigantic problems. I hope you're implementing incredibly innovative programs that deal with those intractable problems. But even if you aren't, I want to thank you just for being there for our students, for the one or dozens or scores of students who are having just a little trouble, and making their days just a little better every day until school becomes fun again. Those kind words, those little supports, those tiny solutions are kinder, more supportive, and larger than you can imagine. Enjoy your week. You deserve it.